Hi, Roger. Uh -huh. It's a pleasure to have you here in Brno in the Czech Republic. Right. Well, I've got a couple of questions for you right. because uh, I understand, if I'm not wrong, that you might be arguably one of the one of the first investors into one Andrea Rossi. And I wanted to ask you a few questions about how you feel about that, how that went down, and uh, how that's um, informed your uh, current understanding of uh, the energy field. Sure. Well, hello, everybody, in Bob Grinia's land. <laughs> Uh, just for the record, uh, Bob asked me to do this. I didn't ask Bob to do this uh, because we've been a, like a little uh, hidden away, a little bit low key with this whole, you know, uh, ECAT technology. But just to give you a little bit of the uh, timeline, uh, my background is you could sort of say the Tao of physics. Um, my background, I ran uh, and I still run uh, a Chinese medicine school, but that took us to sacred geometry and all the things that you can do with uh, you know nature's uh, proportions and ratios particularly the golden mean ratio so i was putting on uh, conferences that took me to what i call my company is breakthrough technologies where we started to put on uh, global conferences around all the emerging technologies so i was kind of already in the 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 game of uh, investigating and researching and supporting uh, the emerging technologies that would pretty much start to take us away from the fossil fuel thing, right? So this is about 13 years ago, I got wind of what Andre Rossi was up to with the so-called uh, ECAT. And uh, what happened was uh, my friend and I, we actually ended up going to Andre Rossi's place first of all in Miami and discussing the possibility of his technologies and uh, basically what Andre was doing, the way he was raising money at that very, very early stage was that he was selling licenses, territorial licenses. And after meeting him in uh, Miami, I arranged to go to Bologna to actually see the technology where he actually had a sort of like a one kind of K uh, unit, uh, you know, sort of set up uh, working. And uh, we weren't able to do like a thorough <laughs> due diligence examination. But at the time, it seemed like he, it was sort of like going into self-sustain mode and there was little puffs of steam coming out. And you're sort of going like, well, if that's going in self-sustain mode, that really is something, you know. And he did have... Uh, even at that early stage, he had, um, you know, about 20 of them in a shipping container and starting to sort of formulate this idea about getting like a one megawatt uh, heat happening out of that and coordinating all the reactors. So, you know, things were uh, looking uh, very good. Of course, uh, Andre Rossi was uh, very confident uh, about his uh, technology. So, uh, I started to invest. And I was pretty much one of the first investors. There was a German group uh, at that time that bought the German license, but essentially I was the first major uh, uh, investor in the ECAT uh, technology. So what uh, we did was we bought the Australian license and, you know, Korea. Uh, my brother got involved now. We brought the African license and we had some... Uh, other investors involved with getting these licenses, but pretty much it was I was the major investor, and pretty much we we you know ended up spending like a half a million dollars, you know, with all the various licenses. Would that be Australian dollars? Yeah, no. Well, everything no, everything was done in uh, euros. Uh, now the um, USA license was off the cards, and China was off the cards, but they had all, you know because. He, a, he was holding on to those licenses, and he, and he wanted a lot more for those licenses anyway. But we pretty much got involved with Japan, all of uh, uh, Asia. Oh, there was a good buddy of mine from uh, Melbourne, uh, and we bought India as well, right? So all of Africa, India. Uh, we also invested in Spain and Portugal. So like a, a big hunk of uh, territory, a, a lot of money all going to Andre and, you know, one of the reasons why I'm doing this with Bob is, 
you know, there's always going to be like the, the whispers going around and, and people not quite understanding, you know, the timeline and, and, and actually what happened. And I have been very, very sort of just like off the scene and watching from the So, so the this would actually be know. in about 2011? Yeah, it? 2012. 2012. Yeah. So but you, you, that was the first time you engaged with... The... Yeah. Okay. And the 2011, the end of 2011, 2012. So buying these licenses over a period of like a year to 18 months. And know, so 2012. What the, you talk about licenses. What, what did that mean for you and mean yeah, for, for the question. inventor? So, first of all, there's a contract involved, guys, you know, a real contract signed by Andre Rossi. Actually, just to, on the record, yeah. I've seen the contract yeah. and I've seen the physical signatures. Yes. They are you, a, a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> just for all the people out there in the internet world, you know, the, there was real money and real contracts. And essentially, it was a, a, a standard uh, contract. It was very, very difficult to negotiate any kind of tweaking of the contract, you know, Andre had this sort of uh, attitude of da 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 da, and we kind of went, oh, that, you know, generally it's a it was a good contract, and uh, essentially the uh, the nature of the contract was a wholesale retail kind of setup that we were exclusive for uh, the ECAT and the future technologies. I might stress of coming out from the Leonardo Corporation. Uh, into the marketplace, and we would buy it wholesale, and then we would uh, do a, like a retail thing. But then, uh, like a year or two, I, I actually even said to Andre in his office, I said, well, that's one way of going about doing it, but you're sort of putting the technology into other people's hands, and who knows what happens with that. Why don't you sell the energy? You can lease these out, and you sell the energy, and he, he resonated with that idea. And like a year later, he was... That's the way he was, you know, talking. Did, did you the, have any responsibilities as a license holder? Uh, like, did you have to achieve a certain target of something? Yeah, good question. Again, that was actually in the contract that we had to sell. Uh, each contract was a little bit different with that, but it was kind of like a reasonable, like sort of uh, 10 million within the first two years. Uh, and if you're talking about you know, uh, coal fusion, low energy nuclear reactions actually working <laughs> and getting them to the marketplace, that was a no sweat game, you know. And uh, so we did have some stipulation in there, but at the end of the day, nothing was delivered uh, from Andre uh, Rossi for us to be able to achieve the basic coordination of that contract. So, which was, but from your point of view, that doesn't mean you can't sell future products. Of course not. A contract right. is contract. And and so as soon as a product... As, as soon as the product is really available... Then that's when your clause... That's when that would kick right. in, okay. you yep. know. Uh, so, you know, it was something like, you know, within two years of the release of the product, you know, that you, you sell X amount, which is what <coughs> you would expect mm -hmm. from a, a contract like that, you know. You and, know. and do you still hold all of those licenses? Yeah. You, you didn't sell any region? Oh, okay. Uh, th thanks for uh, uh, the... Okay, let me correct myself. I sold back the Australian uh, license back to Andre, and he did uh, buy it back because uh, essentially I put everything into this and I uh, sort of got into a high leverage situation. And this now is like five, six years down the game, yeah. and nothing's happening. And, uh, you know, I've got a high, bit of a high leverage, so to actually just relieve some of the, the debt level that I had with it, uh, I sold back the Australian license. So was it a situation... all the others. Was it, was it that you thought when you were visited in 2012, this was near a selling point? You're like, you, you expected to be able to capitalize on your investment within a two, three year window. Yeah. And when that didn't happen by the five year window, you thought, well, maybe I'm overexposed here. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but you've kept other, you've kept and every we've region. Kept all of the licenses for so. which countries specifically? Okay, all of Africa, mm -hmm. right? uh, Portugal, and Spain, right? uh, all of India, and you know Nepal, uh, uh, Bangladesh. Then uh, you could say all of Southeast Asia, like um, Vietnam, and you know all the way through the ASEAN Peninsula, Japan. Yeah. 
And then I personally bought uh, South, uh, well, I, do, I personally bought all of it, but some, some of the licenses actually do have other investors uh, on a smaller scale. Uh, but I, I purchased uh, South uh, Korea, and then uh, I'm a sort of majority shareholder in Japan. Right? So that, that's pretty much the, uh, the licenses and territories that we So have. if Leonardo Corporation was to release any new product, effectively you would then, your cl clauses would jump in and you would, you would be able to sell into those yeah. markets? as far as we're concerned. Okay. Now, uh, for the record, Andre Rossi has been... Uh, you know, like he hasn't communicated. He has he's shown no respect to what we did in those early days with releasing the money so that he could keep developing the technology. He, uh, just for the record, he doesn't answer any uh, emails and basically kind of uh, puts us down, you know, kind of like with this sort of flippant language like, oh, that's that doesn't exist anymore or these kind of things, which is uh, uh, incredibly disrespectful. Yeah. However, so, <laughs> but like, if I give a little bit of my personal story, yeah, myself and literally all other four founding directors of the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project, we only took ourselves at our own expense to South Korea for ICCF 17 in 2012 because of the drama surrounding Andrea Rossi. And yeah. thank you, firstly, oh, yeah. I would argue, because you allowed Rossi the momentum to get that exposure that then brought us into the field to do what we did, which was to try and replicate claims or investigate claims of third parties to see if there's any truth in it yeah. in an open fashion. And I would argue that if you had not made that investment, we would not have got involved. Now, that's not to say we were ever able to validate any real claims of a Andrea Rossi. We yeah. were able to in nickel hydrogen systems mm -hmm. or nickel mm -hmm. constant in the case of Francesco Cellani, yeah. observe excess heat and or some form of emissions in the case of, we called it gamma at the time, but it looked like a, uh, a, a kind of burst of some form of radiation that mm -hmm. was able to travel through hydrogen, glass and air and interact with a, a Geiger Muller tube in 2013, yeah. which we called Gamma at the time, and it got a lot of people very interested, which we then later found out, much later found out, were connected to the US Navy. And yeah, then yeah. secondly, um, we observed in a nickel hydrogen system called GS 5.2, what was determined by the French Nuclear Authority as a beta burst type event, Mm -hmm. uh, which we later uh, found out is likely to do with a breakup of a charge cluster. So we think both events are to do with charge clusters. And it's interesting because the person that originally reached out to us, Hal Puthoff, we didn't know it was Hal Puthoff, it was EarthTex Texas, mm -hmm. uh, without Hal Puthoff names att name attached. Um, it, uh, Hal Puthoff is US Naval Intelligence. And he, their that organization set up by him uh, reached out to us in that initial uh, instance in 2013 with the Chilani cells and um, offered us support, as it were, and we bought a spectrometer. And so uh, it was Hal Puthoff that raised the money to get Ken Shoulders to investigate mm -hmm. John Hutchison that mm -hmm. ended up with the, uh, I the idea of Evos, which we eventually came to by not by any support from the Lena community, but because we just found it in the record, even though it seemed to have been masked. Um, and so it, our journey is implicitly linked with yours. And so, and also with Andrea Rossi's um, mm -hmm. approach to doing oh, this. And yeah. so how we feel is that um, whether he ever had anything or has something even now, uh, it was an initiation point for starting the journey, Absolutely. which led to, in my view, a, a, a reasonably good convergence of understanding mm -hmm. of the phenomena. And so, you know, whether in oh, the look, fullness totally of time, you know, so, so, I mean, he, you, he was a great catalyst at, at the time, a wonderful, as you know, Cold Fusion got this sort of bad rap, you know, Fleshman and Pons did their wonderful thing. I call it, they got bleeps on the screen, right? Uh, but as you know, it all imploded. Uh, you would lose your job if you even mentioned the name. Along comes Andre Rossi, and he, and he kind of catalyzes the whole movement again. And it was really, really exciting, you know. I mean, the reality yeah. is, if we hadn't have had the opportunity with the courage of Francesco Cellani, 
mm -hmm. to share his in uh, his um, reactor with us, we would not have been able to replicate that. That would not have given us inspiration to move forward. That would have not fed into consideration from the European Union. Mm -hmm. All of those people that are funded through Euro the European Union funds might not have received that money, and exactly. that might not have kicked the US yeah. government to fund mostly military people to do research. Well, look, and so I, the I whole totally agree, thing yeah. effectively yeah. could start started with your effort to support yeah. Rossi. Well, you know, I take my head off to Rossi for what, what he's uh, wanting to achieve. Uh, you know, like, uh, like you, Bob, I've been to, you know, some of the uh, more recent cold fusion conferences uh, around the world. And I actually, you know, sometimes at lunch, I sort of go, oh, I'm the guy who got involved with Andre Rossi. And they go like, oh, you know, yeah, it was controversial. But I wouldn't be at this conference unless we had all the you know, the con controversy and the excitement coming out from about the ECAT. And that's why I'm at this conference, you know, so uh, uh, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's going to be an exciting time. There's, you know, the momentum now around, um, you know, cold fusion is phenomenal, you know. and uh, Well, there's real know. work being done yeah. and real investigations that I don't know whether we would be at this point if it wasn't. So, in the round, how would you summarize how you feel about your relationship with Rossi and how you would like things well, to no move forward? Well, there's no relationship for a start because he's not communicating. Right, right. And he's in denial mm -hmm. about uh, what we did at that time, how we helped him, uh, and the contracts that were delivered to us. Uh, and so that's that's just simply naughty, right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'd like to see that uh, evolve into a better relationship. If he ever does put anything uh, into the marketplace, you know, we were the early seed uh, investors and he has to... Um, and you would feel, you would say that you would feel comfortable in promoting that, assuming it worked? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it takes. So, you know, so you're so there to take up the we promotion. Need a, we need a new paradigm, yeah, as you know. Sure. you know. Yeah, So, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, uh, I've got a new uh, cold fusion project called Urangara which is uh, a name, one of the Aboriginal uh, groups. You can't kind of- In Australia? Call, in Australia, mm -hmm. yeah. You can't kind of call them tribes because it wasn't, it's an amazing uh, civilization because they didn't have the sort of hierarchy tribe thing. But it's a name that's uh, given to the sun, Urangara. So uh, I thought that was a very, very appropriate term for the coal fusion uh, project. So it's urangara.com and I've got, uh, a lovely uh, group, just a core group of uh, people uh, working on various aspect, aspects of uh, coal fusion and, you know, wanting to, like everybody else involved, uh, to help uh, move it forward. Yeah. And that's not all you've got, because I understand you've got an upcoming conference here in the I Czech have. Republic. I'm here with Bob, actually, in uh, Bruno. And... I've been putting on events in uh, the Czech Republic for since 1998, and uh, I've been to the Czech Republic over a hundred times. I'm fortunate enough to do seminars here and, and to teach here. And we're putting on a, a, another Alchemy of Prague, uh, which begins on 1 p.m. on the 1st of September, 2024. <laughs> right? And uh, essentially, we do. Uh, it's, the theme is ancient alchemy, uh, and we have Paul Harris involved with that, the inventor of the Therify, but he's actually an old-fashioned alchemist, and we do that in the John D. Edward Kelly Tower of Prague. And then fast forward, we go on a little uh, trip of the Czech Republic, including uh, Chesney Kromov, and then we come to the future alchemy in Bruno with uh, Bob, and that's that aspect of the the whole event is called the Advanced Energy Systems. And as the followers of Bob know, <laughs> Bob, you, you really are leading the game, mate, you know, and you're doing a really significant job of validation, critiquing, due diligence, you know, and uh, I really, really, really respect your uh, work. We've become good friends. In fact, Bob uh, yes, I would was agree. at my place at Bondi Beach just a year <laughs> yes. ago. And uh, so we're doing an advanced energy uh, seminar. And we're exploring uh, a, a complete range of uh, advanced energy system technologies. So uh, everybody is most welcome to, to come. And uh, we can give you some details about that, you know, the website and all of that. 
So thank you very much for taking the time to uh, explain your position, which has never been really properly disclosed. It's the first disclosed. time I've uh, expressed this, and yeah. as I say, it's because you asked me. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Just it's for true. the record. Just for the record. <laughs> and I don't yeah. want to make any uh, waves and, and uh, uh, negativity. You know, it's, what's the point? You yeah. Know? But I, I do feel it necessary for the folks out there to hear the emotional story. You yeah, know, it took a lot uh, of effort. Uh, I mean, you really bust the gut to make that happen. I bust happen. the guts for 18 months running yeah. around, uh, you know, uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so I, I think we're both uh, at ease with the situation. Uh, yeah, it I obviously it was, yeah. um, it was a breakthrough in its own kind, yeah, in terms in of way, getting yeah. a conscious movement, exactly. re-engaging with this science. You need that consciousness there for, yeah. it to, for it to manifest. Yeah, and there are many of the so-called mainstream Lena scientists that are funded today because of what happened then. The MFMP yeah. exists because of what happened then. And yeah. we all want this to be a product that we can use or that our children or grandchildren can use in their lives to exactly. help protect the biosphere and take the human condition forward. Rossi has already played a role for, yeah. for good or bad, yeah. uh, but ultimately good has come out of it. Yeah. And my personal wish is that before he passes, he provides something of substance mm -hmm. uh, that can sure. be learnt from to take the science forward. Yeah. And from my own uh, you know, personal view of your own uh, sacrifice, Roger, uh, I would like you to be in a position at some point to be able to distribute a product that may be produced by Andrea Rossi at some point in the future uh, into the markets in which you supported him uh, to uh, develop. One thing you need in this game is a lot of patience. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of patience, that's for sure. So we welcome you all here yeah. to the Czech Republic. Yeah, September. On the 1st of September, yes. Well, that's where it starts in Prague. In and Prague. then we come to Bruno yeah. uh, for a really amazing weekend. Uh, hanging out with Bruno, uh, hanging out with Bob and Bruno. Bruno, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and with Paul. And, you know, there's some really interesting uh, technology. And of course, We'll be talking about, you know, the emerging thunderstorm and, you know, the waste to energy and Bob's expertise and uh, cold fusion and uh, the You'll hydrogen. even have a chance to do some experiments and to see some yeah. experiments performed yeah. and look at things under the microscope and those kind of things. So, yeah, yeah I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I know what's going on in Prague and Chesky Krumlov is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, so yeah. thank you very much, Roger, for taking yeah. the time to do this. Yeah. Thanks, Bob.